All right, so I made this molding that fits at the bottom, but um, I think it's best that I kind of cover it too. So I'll just go all the way through the model. In this case, I had this area. Have this object. And what we want to do is create the cube version of this first, not the rectangle version. Okay, so there's a cube version right here and the rectangle version, but you can always make the rectangle version. But to make the rectangle version a cube, harder to do. Okay, so here we go. First off, let's start out with bracing it. I use this one a lot as far as the, the mesh is concerned, this brayer I call it, brace square. Smooth that out. Okay, let's uh, do the interior of it. And if you ever worked with like router bits or routers, you know that's this is, that's huge stuff to know when it comes down to this. Notice that this thing is extruding weird. It's extruding in. It's because I had selected a bottom face. So make sure you, you are perfectly aware of what you are selecting because that will ruin you uh, in the workflow. There we go. So the selection should be there at the top. If it's not, you've selected something bad. All right, so I'm just extruding this face in. And then I can extrude it down. Now before we get any more pieces of geometry in here, uh, let's brace this one. So 1 and 3 on the keyboard allows you to see what the form looks like ahead of time. In this case, this form has sharper edges here. Okay, So in order to get that, I'll hit 1 on the keyboard. and brace the inside of this with some edge loops. Okay, again, three in the keyboard allows me to see, okay, that works out good. I have now this inward face, but it's a little sharper. It's perfect. Had I wanted it sharper than that, I would have put these edge loops closer together. All right, now um, the inward bevel. So it's best to sanction that off um, by in creating an internal area. There we go. So now when you smooth, that's the only thing that gets smooth in that area. That's why I meant about doing the entire thing on camera because there's all kinds of learning opportunities here. Okay, this one doesn't go all the way up. It stays a little bit shallow. Again, that's what it looks like if I smooth it. I don't want that. So one and three again. So I'm going to brace this. That's exactly what I want right there. Okay, so jump in seven or top view. Sorry, I keep using that as a hotkey, but you don't have that. <laughs> Shift D to duplicate it. Duplicate it again, put it in the center. 
Now we don't want to scale here. What we want to do is be able to just stretch out the vertices. So I'm going to stretch these out. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap. Try to make that gap very uniformed all the way around. So you can see that same gap right here is the same gap here. Okay, and then I'll make another cube. I want to say I keep like making the same shape over and over, but really I do. I want this recess to be part of the model. I think it adds some details to it. It's also in the original design. Jump into the top view in wireframe. Make that a little bit bigger. Make that a little bit bigger. And if I need to do the vertices, I can. So I switch over to vertices. Now I want that groove to be in there, but I don't want it so deep. So what I could do here is grab these and combine them. Modify center pivot, kind of shrink that down. That will shallow it out. And I'm not going to get a good representation of that. So see, anytime I go up too far, I get that cut off. And I don't want that to occur. Okay, what I'm doing here is just scaling these features down a little bit. I want to do that across all objects though. So, object mode, vertices, Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. Yes, I like that better. It's not so deep and it still lends good to the design. So what I'm trying to do is establish some contrast between the pieces too. That way. Okay, mesh combine those. Modify center pivot. And there we go. Okay, now let's look at uh, the molding around the outside edge in the next video.